Hello, welcome to this DCS FA18 uh, tutorial video. This video will cover fuel management and fuel efficiency, as well as jettisoning your stores. To start off with, to set up jettisoning things, down here we have this jettison station select panel, and each of these buttons corresponds with one of the pylons that we can see on our stores page. To access this, we can go to our menu, pack menu, upper left, it says stores. We'll click that, and it lets us know what's on all of our pylons. So this is our center, our left inner, our right inner, our left outer, and our right outer. You can see that corresponds to this, but backwards. So pylon 7, the left in this picture, is our right pylon here. In order to jettison a pylon, we will want to select it. So in this case, I will prep to drop this outer fuel tank. So I will select right inner, corresponding with the pylon. And I will move this station uh, select jettison knob to rack LCHR, rack launcher. At this point, if we arm our plane, when we're in the air and we press this jettison button, right in the center of that knob, it will jettison whatever we have selected. So if we wanted to jettison our center pylon, we would choose center, make sure it's lit up green, and when we press this jettison button, as long as we're armed, we will drop our fuel tank in the center. If we wanted to jettison either our left cheek or our right cheek missiles, we would change this knob to right fuselage missile or left fuselage missile uh, correspondingly. For now, I'm going to prep to drop this right fuel tank and keep it in safe to make sure I don't accidentally jettison my fuel. Moving back, generally, if you have fuel on your wings, you're going to want to empty those tanks first before you move to your center tank. So when you drop these, it will reduce the weight and the drag on your aircraft. In order to force the aircraft to use the fuel on our wings rather than on our center, we will come down to right behind the throttle and you will see external tanks wing and center. To force the plane to use the wing fuel tanks and not the center, we will move the center uh, switch position down to stop. Now the plane will use the fuel from our wings. When it is empty, we will jettison the wing fuel tank and we will come down here and move this switch to normal. And then the plane will use our center fuel tank once that is empty, we will jettison it by changing that to center. And our plane will start using its internal fuel. To know how much fuel your plane has, we'll come down to here. This display shows your current pounds of fuel. So the top number is the total fuel on your aircraft, tanks included. The bottom number is the internal fuel on your aircraft. If they are both equal, you know your tanks are empty and you can jettison them. When we're in the air, I will show you how to tell specifically how much fuel is in each tank because you'll want to know when your wing tanks are empty so you can jettison them and then turn on your center tank. All right, runway is clear. Let's get ready for takeoff. So the Hornet is extremely good on fuel. You'll be able to fly hundreds of miles on a single center fuel tank. I only have the second one on here as an example of how to tell when we have fuel in it and how to jettison it and also how to utilize these switches down here. So 
So on a single fuel tank, you'll generally have enough fuel to be able to fly 113 miles or so, get in a complete air-to-air -air engagement, and then fly all the way back on a single fuel tank in the center pylon. Depending on how you fly and how heavily weighted down your aircraft is, it might be more, it might be less. But as a general rule of thumb, using the standard air-to-air -air loadout in a single tank, you'll have enough to get all the way out, fight, and then come all the way back home. As we take off, we're going to stay in burner the entire time. Because I have a non-symmetric loadout, my plane's going to want to bank off to the right on takeoff because that's the heavier side. So I'm going to anticipate that. Gear up. And I'm going to want to maintain about a 12 degree climb. See my plane wants to bank. So I'll go ahead and trim out with my trimmer switch. All right, that looks good. Now I want to be about 12 degrees up. And I'm staying in bolt burner for this entire flight. Or at least for now as an example. To tell how much fuel is in our tanks, we can go to our menu, go to our supplemental menu, and over on the left we see the fuel button. Let's click that. So here we can see our external tank. Oh, I forgot to put that back to stop. We can see our external tank is now draining fuel. And when this hits zero, we'll know our uh, wing tank is empty. This is right external, so our right wing. Center tank, and if we had one on our left wing, it would be here. These all display the various internal fuel compartments of your aircraft. A good rule of thumb as you're climbing out is to keep an eye on your Mach number, either on your HUD or in your helmet. You always want your Mach number to be increasing. Your airspeed will drop as you get higher because of the altitude. So when you get high up, we're paying attention to our Mach number, not our airspeed. As long as our Mach number is staying the same or increasing, we're A-OK. -okay. As we start to get up, to keep our Mach number from dropping, we always want it increasing. I'm going to bring my nose down just a smidge. So if I was flying out here to fight these aircraft, I would stay in burner. Um, pretty much the whole time and still have enough fuel to fly out, fight, and come back. Um, once again, depending on your loadout, you might have to not fly in burner if you're heavily loaded for a ground attack far away. So you'll fly in mill power, which is full throttle up into your burner detent. All right. We see our aircraft is now listing to the left because that's heavier. Our right external wing tank is empty. We'll click right, enter. We'll change this knob down to rack launcher, make sure we're armed, and press and hold the jettison button. Our fuel tank is no longer there. Going to our stores page, we also see it is no longer there. Let's go ahead and prep for dropping our center fuel tank and turn its fuel transfer back on, utilizing this switch. If you're flying with a single centerline fuel tank, you can ignore these switches. That's just for if you have wing tanks. Now that I've dropped off that right hand side, my plane wants to roll to the left. So let's go ahead and trim back out to the right. Alrighty, that looks good. So you can see utilizing this method, we've gotten all the way up in the air, uh, 37,000 feet at this point. We're still climbing at about five degrees. Let me get my trim back up. And our speed is always increasing. It just dropped from 1.03 to 1.02, so I know I need to bring my nose down 
and our Mach number is back to increasing. This will allow us to get as high and as fast as possible. The higher our aircraft is, the less fuel it will consume, even in burner. So now we're at 40,000. Generally, you'll not want to go higher than 42,000 at the absolute most. Um, but this example, I'll just level off here. Let's turn this beeping down. We'll cover that in the EW tutorial. Alrighty, so we see we still have fuel in our centerline tank because these two numbers are not the same. But I'm going to go ahead and jettison them now. And you can see we no longer have our centerline fuel tank and the numbers are the same, showing we are just on our plane fuel. Now, say you got in a combat engagement, we end up getting real close to the deck. Let's go ahead and get down there. So generally, when you're in a combat engagement, your speed will be much higher than it will normally be because you will have dropped altitude, you're fighting, you're going in and out. At the end of your engagement, I'm going to bring my throttle back to idle. You can go ahead and cache your Mach number airspeed into altitude so you don't waste fuel. Say I was at the end of my fight and I only had 2,000 pounds of fuel left, I could go ahead, give myself a little bit of throttle, not in full burner, and cache that airspeed into altitude. The higher you are, the less fuel you're going to use. When you see your Mach number drop down to about 0 0.8, you can go ahead and give her some throttle and level off, and then just slowly climb like you were doing during your takeoff. A very useful feature of the Hornet, when you are below about Mach 0.9, you have access to the FPOS page. This page, you go to your menu, Supplemental, this button right here, FPOS. It will give you information about your aircraft based on its current loading, airspeed, altitude, or ways you can fly your plane to be the most fuel efficient. So here you can see the aircraft is calculated based on how we're currently flying at 17,000 feet and 328 knots, Mach 0 0.68. We have a current range of 620 miles until we reach 2,000 pounds of fuel. Down here, it will show our best Mach uh, to 2,000 pounds is 0 0.65. So if I wanted to be max fuel efficiency um, in our current altitude, I should bring my Mach number that you see here down to 0 0.65. And if I did that, I would have a range of 647 miles as opposed to my current 590. For the absolute best fuel efficiency, it's telling me I need to go ahead and get my optimum range values here so for best fuel efficiency i would have to be flying at 37,000 feet at a mach of 0 0.83 and if i did that i would have a range of 852 miles until 2,000 pounds of fuel left very very useful for fuel consumption especially in conjunction with our autopilots and our auto throttle control Generally, on 2,000 pounds of fuel, your bingo, you can make it clear from one side of the map to the other as long as you're flying efficiently. It might not be in burner, you might not get there fast, but you'll get there and you won't run out of fuel in the air. Over on this right-hand side, we have the current use of our plane. So we see pounds per nautical mile, is in this case, is 15. I'll go ahead and jettison my left inner pylon. And 
And with that um, extra weight gone, you see our range actually increased a little bit until down here in the optimums. Um, if you're ever coming back from a mission and you're worried about fuel, don't be afraid to jettison what's on your plane, and then you'll be able to make it a few extra miles. All right, that covers jettisoning your tanks and fuel efficiency. Just remember, it might not be fastest, but if you're worried about your fuel, just ride in uh, mill power or even three quarters throttle. If you're in burner, make sure you're high up or else you'll be burning through your entire fuel supply. Thanks for watching.